Welcome to the Polymuse Podcast. My thanks, Michael. This is the Cousin Ben, and we're here to host. <laughs> Welcome to the Polymuse Podcast. It's the place where we review songs. Like we're... Psycho by System of a Down. That's great. So welcome for that. We're going to do some psycho shenanigans with uh, Psycho <laughs> by System of a Down today. That's the name of the episode. That's the name of the song. That's the name of the lifestyle. That's the name of the lifestyle brand. That's the name of the experience on Polymuse today. Well, let's take it down and up. We don't have to go psycho in order to review Psycho. Not totally psycho for Psycho. It's a good song. It's good. It's a good mindset to be in, though. Off a of System of a Down's album toxicity their second album released in 2001 of course last time we did uh every album mention of 2001 essentially and kind of an all-star year for a lot of different types of music not least of which is disco metal by system of a down they got a disco beat in here it's very disco-y very shuffly and it's basically a disco metal hybrid about a disco metal hybrid if i'm not mistaken <laughs> wonderful no, I'm if I'm not mistaken. It. Yeah, pretty much about being abandoned. Taking drugs. Do you really want to think and stop? Like the world stopping when you're using drugs. Watch your body fully drop. Like yeah, an out-of-body cool. experience. Yeah. So we are right on the, on the spot here for a band in the, of this caliber, I think. Although I don't know. This is one of the groups that was particularly heavy into drug usage, being that they were very much political activists into the realm of... Hugging trees? Yeah. With the insides that's, of their that's, lungs? That's, I guess that's what I would say. Not that they weren't part of that world. You can be both. You can be an you can activist. S- you can certainly be both. I they, mean, they may have been both. Yeah, I mean, we, had, we have orgy songs, so we can have a lot of different things going on. They've got some weird songs. And but with a suggestion sometimes of being lost in the sauce, I don't think that they were that type of group necessarily. Probably not quite as psycho as the song would have you believe. <laughs> Pro- that's what I was getting at. Perhaps it's about <laughs> not being, you know, maybe it's a cautionary tale. Maybe don't be this way. Mm. It's a little crazy. A little crazy. It's a little rocking. It rocks. There's nothing wrong with the song. And then they've got basically, it's like a bridge section that comes around. Like the chorus is kind of the, do you really want to make it stop? But then it goes into like the chill, like it's almost like lounge music, speaking of lounge music. It's again, it's just basically three different pieces, like three different riffs. They don't repeat the riffs. They're all different atmospheres that they go back and forth between. And I think People probably forget that Psycho is that detailed, like all the little different pieces. They probably just remember the Psycho part, but it is that way. Yeah, and that could certainly be from a more content standpoint as far as taking drugs or mental effects on the back end. That can, of course, come from taking different types of drugs or different types of mental conditions as well. But it's another one of those where like the song kind of reflects the content as well, it seems like. And though we can be critical of lyrics and writing, and then this is not a whole lot of deep writing in that particular this particular case it very much reflects kind of what's going on in the craziness and the repetitiveness it very much fits what's going on in the song and the content and what the messaging is as well you don't want to get me started on no. that should we play the song i mean it's a banger it's like a it's exactly like that it's so like let's a go definitive ahead i'm not going psycho i promise it's like a definitive system of a down track i don't know how long how often they play it live but they should They should always play it live. They could just do what I did with Shimmy and just play this song repeatedly live. Let's play it. Let's play it once. Here we go. Very cool riffs. Very cool different atmosphere on the bridge. They do it fast. They do it loud. They do it soft. They They do do it it quiet. They do it every type of which way. All wrapped up into one song called Psycho. What else can we say about this song? I don't I'm at a loss. I'm going psycho. Well, this is one of the first tracks that we had off off the collection of songs that we downloaded it was. when we were younger. It was. Which was, again, a hodgepodge of toxicity. Steal This Album had just come out, I think, and the original album as well, so the first three. And this was another one of those. You know, when you're listening to a group like this in your, what were we, 10, 11, yeah. 12-ish, and it's just wild music to kind of hear for the first time. That's a good point. <laughs> so, it's party music, though. Yeah. And we knew it was tongue-in-cheek. Did we? I I remember you burning me a CD and your mom told you don't put any swear words on the CD. So you were like carefully choosing songs and then you got to this song and you looked at me and you're like, this one says psycho groupie cocaine crazy. Is those, are those bad words? <laughs> like, what do you think? <laughs> do you, are those too bad of words to be on the CD? And I was like, no, I can hear those words. That's cool. <laughs> and this made the cut. 
<laughs> oh my god! I, but I specifically remember that it was oh an orange god. disc that you had burned. Some it was mostly System of a Down, but Evanescence. Yes. And your mom like stuck her head in the room. It's like don't put any <laughs> swear words. And then you're like, is psycho groupie cocaine crazy a swear word? I don't know. I'm like, no, no, that's cool. That one's cool. Yeah, no cussing. <laughs> they don't. None don't, of that counts. Don't worry about the content. <laughs> I don't think we can say the C word, honestly. I think Probably that's not. explicit. It is. I'm sure it this is. This is an explicit. It's drug use, drug content, <sighs> sexual content, right. different stuff like that. That's not Suggestive FCC content. compliant. <laughs> it is, because Eric Clapton has that song, Cocaine, although yeah. he says she don't like cocaine. Oh, it's so an advisory maybe that, message. <laughs> well... I advise you not to. From the worst anti-cocaine spokesman possible. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? I don't know anymore. I burned an orange CD. That sounds like me. Yellow and orange. I like one of my favorite colors. Like yeah. Bright colors. It was some kind of, you know, colored disc. That's and then awesome. Bring back orange and colored discs. CDs. I could probably find it. I probably should find it because that was we've talked about it like a thousand times on the podcast where we just would download random singles. Yeah. Those are the system of a dawn songs that I had for years. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a nine track album, and I think Evanescence Bring Me to Life was one of the tracks. Oh, I'm sure. And I think the rest of it was System of a Down. And I know so I think it was Psycho War Science. Johnny. <laughs> yeah. I know War Johnny and Science for sure. Was Shimmy on there? Suggestions was okay. definitely on there. Chop Suey? Maybe. Toxicity. You said you don't remember that one as much. Maybe. Yeah, I don't I don't think Toxicity was on there. All right. You'll have to find it. You have to find it. We can list the track on uh, on our socials. You can see. Just the, the ones without CD the swear words. In color. <laughs> you can find it. I can find it. I definitely still have it. That's awesome. I haven't thought about it in a long time. Do you think this is about a real groupie? They had a real particular groupie, and they're like, girl, I'm going to put you in a song, and you're going to regret it. I imagine pieces of it come from real life. Real yes. people? Maybe there's a real... Their groupies? Or mm. do you think they get a lot of groupies? I bet they... I bet they do. Did okay with I the ladies. Bet, yes. I bet so. So, who knows? We'll never know. They'll never reveal the true identity. What psycho did they mean? Was it just any particular psycho? What else were we doing in 2001 besides listening to music about uh, cocaine? Well, this, again, thinking of things I was burning for you, Evanescence and and, uh, System of a Down are kind of tamer. I was was also downloading Slipknot. Well, I was. (laughs) Yeah, I was. I came a little, yeah, they, I was certainly, but I was just thinking in this particular vein, like Slipknot right. and Mudvayne and some of the right. other groups and just the that wild, how we were exposed to some of this wildness. It was wild. I remember yeah. being, it was, it must've been in 1999, a couple of years before this. But I just remember I was in a lot of um, like plays, but I, all the other people were high schoolers and I was in like grade school. So I was like exposed to like yeah. corn and limb biscuit, like corn, all that stuff. Biscuit, yeah. I was aware of it and afraid of it. <laughs> and it was weird. And they purposely, and uh, Disturbed, that's another one. Yes. I, re- I remember when that came out, all the, the high school kids that I was in the, the community theater thing with, they loved Down with the Sickness. Yeah. And they would sure. come up to me and do the wah. <laughs> and I'd be like, ah. <laughs> and eventually, you know, became a. Like I said, the stuff that was initially was freaky, I eventually grew to appreciate. <laughs> I just remember the kids were listening to Blink-182 and all the like sexual content as well. And how that was so taboo like, from Take Off Your Pants and Jacket and albums like that. I feel like so much of that was over our heads. Like even because all the small things, as we mentioned on the last episode, is on Kids Bop one. So like, it's like <laughs> Blink was like put up there with like Backstreet Boys and Ninety Eight Degrees That's true. and like Smash all Mouth these weird and, little yeah. like Pretty Boy bands, even though pretty they boys, were yeah. like punk rockers. Like the music is, I don't care who you are, like the music rocks. Yes. Blink does rock. They suck live. The records are great. They're great at songwriting and they're great at making like really, really energetic, poppy three chord songs. Yeah, they're funny. Exactly. The harmonies are great. The the layers that they do with the limited rhythmic palette that they have are perfect. It's like whatever you would want from that type of music. Where was I going with this? It's just weird. Like <laughs> I feel like I didn't even realize any of the sexual blink stuff. Right. Like, that they were so, so, so extreme. 
with all that. Well, and you wouldn't notice all the system of a down references either. Right. But then I eventually got the Mark, Tom, and Travis show. Oh, and yes. And that is just like off the wall. Yes. That sure is. <laughs> yeah. Well, what did you grade, Psycho? Psycho is a B-plus song. B-plusser. I gave it a solid A. Nice. Solid A. So I'm glad we're high in the... Uh, pretty much on the same level on this one did we were, not make the mixtape for no. either of us but there's other there are other songs that do these tricks just as well the disco thing's kind of unique but all in all this type of vibe from system is not you know we'll, we, we can cover this vibe yeah through some other means without Certainly. necessarily having Certainly. i wonder how often it is in their set list like how often they this is like a go-to vibe or if they put some of their other kind of slammy disco-y beats in there instead of this one they definitely have plenty to choose from to fill out kind of the whole palette of their set like that so maybe we'll do some research into that and let you know if we got a live version of psycho ready to blow yeah i wish that they'd done more of i know they're credited to adding armenian elements and those kind of instruments into their music and some of the disco and some of the stuff like that but the relatively most of those songs can be counted on two hands or less than that one hand sometimes i wish they'd done more of those elements in different tracks they, they could have really done more of a lincoln parkian type of more expansion rhythms. into different different regions now lincoln park as a whole i think they they really have some misses on their catalog as a whole with just how far they were up and down the spectrum yeah as far as experimentation but system of a down is a group that really could have pushed it into some different areas i think but they were a really set band they they kind of had a certain sound and they narrowed in on it and they perfected it and did it perfectly but yeah it would have been cool to hear kind of their more experimental you know letting them kind of they only did like we we've said a hundred times they've got these five albums that we're covering it's kind of small i mean yeah for a band that's that large that has that much talent that can write that many songs they never stop i mean serge and darren both have solo careers that have plenty plenty more music so it's not like they were out of ideas they still perform in the western united states close to their homes and uh, i think they go international once in a while so they do perform as a group sometimes (laughs) not where we're currently living so we don't (laughs) see them unless you were to take a trip out but yeah as far as still creating music they do have their individual endeavors. Pretty want, psycho. If you want to touch on toys briefly for our nostalgia corner in 2001, now it was mostly a lot of properties related to movies and cartoons and that kind of thing. Not a lot of, I, I guess, unique individual toy specific properties. So we had a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff, Harry Potters. We were big into Dragon Ball Z. That was Dragon Ball Z time. The Bionicle Legos were toys of the year my brothers were certainly into those a lot i don't know if you were too much into the i had a few of them the figures and the pieces that was an offshoot of lego certainly kind of yeah it was a lego made thing but they were like new pieces basically they weren't like lego bricks they were cool they were like action figures that you could make they had little gears inside them that you could like swivel the gear and it would they'd like chop their sword or chop an axe those those guys were dope and then the boxes they came in like all the little pieces were in the box and you dump them out but then once you build the guy the box is like a display canister for him like they lock into the base yep, and then when you really like cool. unscrew the lid that you pull them out and it's like a you know display case for them almost yeah it was a great setup <laughs> they also had comic books they had bionicle comic books for a while as well a long long time yep. i have a lot of those because they kept mailing them to my house yeah that's right well, they had the Lego magazines for a long time, too. Those were free. They would email those out, both the products, and uh, they would discuss products and have comics in those as well. So Lego, for a while, did a number of different things to kind of get you to buy stuff. But that was When you could sell really kids cool. magazines. Yeah, yeah, it was the same era as Nintendo Power, which they also don't publish that anymore. Right. But it was so great to get those things in the mail. And it's it was mostly an advertisement. That's the thing is... Yeah, but you know, it, was, it had comics and it had everything in there, and, and the then games and you still, I think it had a few articles, so it still had like some quality stuff to it. Besides, yeah, <laughs> but the reviews—they're <laughs> not going to tell you right the truth. They're not going to be like like especially Nintendo Power. It's like, are they really going to give a bad review to a, <laughs> to Nintendo, a Nintendo game? game? <laughs> I don't think so. Like, is Lego going to be fair about what uh, sets are worth your money and what exactly you should be spending your money on? Exactly. And we did touch on uh, hit clips, I think, in some previous episodes here, how they were like one minute or 30 second samples. We remember 30 seconds. I have it down as one minute samples of big songs. 
like, uh, you know, Smash Mouth, of course, as we've talked about, and NSYNC and Britney Spears and different things like that. And of course, they came in, they came in little players, you could slide it in, but there's also like a deluxe boombox. I had a boombox, you could slide it in the back. And of course, these were many things, the palm of your hand, like a mini boombox. But those were uh, a hit for a brief period. I think you can still buy them online as like a collectible, fun, nostalgia piece. So those are big, uh, the toys at the time. Of course, we remember getting a lot of stuff at the old KB Toys. KB in Toys the was States. cool. They put a lot of stuff on discount all the time, so we would just get tons and tons of different toys and action figures. One of my best childhood memories was going on vacation as a kid, myself and my folks and my two brothers. We were out on a beach for my birthday. I remember I was young, young, and my parents for my birthday just got me a box full of action figures. Yeah. It was all KB toy markdowns. There you go. And it was just like, you know, X-Men and Spider-Man and I don't even know what else. All kinds of other hodgepodge of stuff. Alien and Predator figures. Whoa. <laughs> just all kinds of stuff. KB Toys is awesome, dude. Toy liquidators. You could get toys there that they didn't have anywhere else. I had a, a similar memory where I had a Christmas where I just opened a huge cardboard box. There was only one present under the tree. That was me. But it was a big cardboard <laughs> box. And then inside of it was like a hundred action figures. Like every single X-Men. Yes. I think it was mostly X-Men. Yep. But I got I got probably yeah, it wasn't a hundred, but I probably got like twenty or thirty action figures out of that box. That was my Christmas present that year. Yeah. Good memories. Action figures, always the best. <laughs> Still the best. They're just twenty dollars a piece now instead of four. <laughs> They're a lot, and they sell the ones with the comic books so that they can pretend that they sold a comic book to a kid, even though they, you know, can't do that either. Oh, and those go in the comic tallies, the that, sales oh for yeah. that. Oh, yeah, that's why they throw them in there. And gotcha. Then it's so silly. The uh, new DC figures look cool. They're going back to the, like, superpowers line from the 80s. That's cool. But they're, like, re-releasing them one at a time so you can actually, like, collect them. So that's I'm cool. I'm thinking about it. They're $10 a piece. I'm going to pick up the set online or something that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get i'm gonna wait for them to that's what i'm worried about i hope that they do successful enough that they keep releasing them but not so successful that they like rise in value or whatever where people like yeah you know you actually have some retained value in what you're putting into the the figures now since it's both the collectible and you know you're not just paying four dollars for something cool it's you have to invest money into these things now <laughs> well you buy some of these transformers and whatever and they come out and then when they're gone they're gone so it's like they're twenty dollars at walmart or whatever oh. but then if you want like you know a year or two later you're like oh i need that guy to complete my lineup or gotcha. to complete my set or whatever and then they just rise in price from the original sticker price because yep you know everybody picked them clean from whatever store so it's weird it's like hopefully uh they make more than they sell and then yes. and they'll i'll be able to get them for like half off at walmart or something on clearance instead of having to pay yeah. double or the opposite will happen and i'll think about it again two years from now and they'll be like tri <laughs> triple the price somewhere like right they sold out of all of them yeah i guess it all depends on how many they make and of course wrapping it back to to music real quick we saw gray days who was involved in the dc comics album release as they released music tied into their comic book line uh, death metal i believe it was so they released an album to kind of go along with their comic line at the time. That was in 2021. So we still have a few tie-ins. It's very rare to music and action figures as well with comic books. But it's great to have that. Of course, we have them in the theaters all the time now. But it's great to see all those kind of elements come together for especially for guys like us. System of a Down, Psycho is a good song. We liked it as kids, but we were not participating in that lifestyle as kids. We were participating, in, participating in Bionicles. In and, <laughs> yeah. and we're not participating in it now. That's not what I meant. And given the choice between Psycho and whatever we just talked about, Bionicles and all that, yeah. it's an easy choice. And that's the choice we made. We're reviewing, we we'll re keep reviewing the system of a down on the internet, reviewing nostalgia, going back for what we grew up with in the era and keeping it real. We'll talk to you next time. We'll be covering the aerials in the sky. It's going to be cool. That's a good song.